Welcome to the station, Kentucky's Conservative Outpost, the only program on in the in, in the state of Kentucky and the city of Louisville that deals with politics from a conservative perspective. And so we want to thank you for joining us. And we're at the Gate Fair. How about that? This, this is one of the best fairs uh, that we've had in a long time. I was here over the weekend, guys. 100,000 people uh, plus were here on Sunday. I think they had a similar number on Saturday. And uh, it's really been a great, great fair. It, it was, uh, it, you know, so what was the best thing about the fair uh, is the smell. <laughs> I mean, the, the, that could be argued, but yes. Be, well, it's, <laughs> good, it's the best and the worst thing. About yeah. the if you're out on the, if you're out, uh, on the main uh, drag there with all the food, food courts. Course, you know. exa- right, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. It's, it's, it's yeah. a wonderful smell of uh, like there, garlic sausage yeah. and uh, cinnamon pecans or something. Right, right. Yes. That's, a, that's a great That's place. where you want to be. That's where you want to be. You walk over to the, uh, to the horse horse barn, so you yeah. get a little bit a little different smell there. But, uh, but anyway, but it's, it's a great place to be, and we want to um, welcome you to the show. We have Bob Scott, our, our intrepid co-host and of the station, and we have a special guest, Jim Waters, with us. And Jim, thanks for being out here today. Great to be here. Thanks for, uh, for uh, braving the, uh, the the Kentucky State Fair parking just to make it to this booth. It's, it's, <laughs> That's a, a whole other issue. It's, it's a challenge. Just to, just <laughs> hey, to, get, to have this many people here, I'll, t- I'll take it. Exactly okay. right. Exactly yeah. right. Okay, well, let's talk about what's on everybody's mind right now. It's, it's, we're about, uh, I guess, about two, three months away from the election for governor and also other statewide offices. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about the governor's race. So we've got um, Andy Beshear, the incumbent, uh, against uh, Daniel Cameron, the current attorney general, but he's, he wants to be governor. And so it's, uh, you know, this is there's a lot to, to cover, a lot to talk about in this race because um, I've, you know, I've been following it pretty closely and, and uh, it seems like there is some issues on uh, on on the Republican side. So is it, is it really getting the traction that it needs? Is it going well? You know, it, you would think in Kentucky, it's generally a red state. It voted for Trump by a high margin. Every other statewide office has Republican office holders. Uh, Bevin only lost by five thousand votes to Andy Beshear last time. It would it would seem like this would be just an easy toss up, easy layup for a strong Republican candidate. But but we've had this. Um, COVID dynamic play out where we where it's given the current governor a base an infomercial for about uh, an hour a day for for over a year, and so it's been the Andy show, you know, for for about a year during COVID, and so that really uh, it, it created an impression in people's minds that this this is an active governor and he really cares for me and da 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 da. He's saving the day, and, and so which some people love that, but uh, a lot of people really turn them off, and so. Anyway, so it is a unique race in that sense. And so you have a strong incumbent, and the polls are showing that. The polls are showing that it is not uh, an easy layup for the Republican candidate. And so, so I'm going to start with um, start with you guys uh, and just get your opinion. Is the, is the campaign going well from the, from the Cameron standpoint? Are we are we getting traction? Is anything happening? Well, if you look at even what's happened since Bevan. Governor Bevan lost in his re-election, but very close race. If you look on paper, as they would say, mm-hmm. Republicans should be doing pretty well in this race. Uh, we've had a number, uh, a, a significant increase in Republican registrations, uh, voter registrations, and people changing parties or, or maybe deciding for the first time they what party they want to be part of. I think a lot of that does have to do with the national, what's happening nationally. Uh, I think what's happening at the state level has trailed that, but is beginning to catch up in many ways. I mean, every one of our state constitutional office holders, except for the governor and lieutenant governor's office, is uh, Republican. And they won pretty handily in the last election. And I would expect to see a lot of that repeated in uh, next year mm-hmm. but uh you it so and then it's a presidential election next year so um but you know with the governor's race uh, tom um this year uh is not there's not any other uh there's not a presidential election on the ballot there's not a there's not an off-year congressional election so now you have an issue of turnout and i think voter Bingo. turnout's going to have a lot to do with this race yes. and I, I think that whichever side can motivate their 
base to turn out really now usually talk about the base in the primary but because kentucky we're one of only a couple of states that has any kind of election next year or this year in an off year odd numbered year uh the vote the turnout will be an issue because of that if it was in a presidential election year i think that's republicans in our state but right. just because of the numbers but i i think that uh being an off year i think they have a real uphill climb in terms of uh in terms of, of many issues, the voter turnout, yeah. and also I think, um, you know, there there's a, a definite divide when it comes to Bashir mm-hmm. in terms of how he handled the the COVID. I think he's going to get high points for how he handled the disasters, the tornado. Mm-hmm. Uh, he did a very good job with that, um, and also the flooding. But let's not forget. The governor doesn't make decisions about spending money. It's the legislature. Mm. And because of their conservative policies in building our rainy day fund, building our reserves, they could write $200 million checks to both of those areas and help immediately because of those sensible, common sense, conservative policies. They didn't spend like Andy Bashir wanted them to. So let's get the record straight here. Also, I think think it really depends on it, it, with the COVID, with how he handled that, I think it really depends on many things. One is if you're a small business owner who was shut down, a small restaurant owner, by a governor who absolutely has no clue about how a business works. He He's a lawyer. He has no clue about business. None mm-hmm. whatsoever. Right. He, he thought that the restaurants could just snap their fingers and come back whenever mm. he, he, whenever right. he uh, decided they could. Right. That's not how America operates. Yeah. Now, the legislature, to its credit, did try to rein him in a little bit but on this. But I think it's really going to depend. I do think there are people who are naive about yeah, this. And right. they think, well, here's this, you know, and he, he's a he's a likable candidate. Right. Both of them are. Right. But I do think it's going to matter. If, if you were affected from. negatively by these shutdowns and the, by the way they operated, you yeah, you have a certain perspective on Andy Bashir that's, yeah. that's not positive. So. Yeah. Uh, for example, a lot of churches out there that were shut down. If you're a member of a, of a local church that was shut down for months and months, or weeks, or however however long it was, and then if, even if you had in some churches tried to come back, and he would send the send the state police to, to take people's license. I mean, it's like a Gestapo, you know. On Andy's Easter be, Sunday, on Easter that's Sunday, that's like, you know. I mean, all times, time. you know. That's Andy's scary. Gestapo. In Kentucky, yeah. in so, Kentucky. <laughs> that's right. Isn't that crazy? It's just something about the Bashirs and wanting to lock up Christians. I don't get it. It's it's a. Uh, mm-hmm. It's because uh, his dad did the same thing with uh, Kim Kim Davis up there. So, um, but anyway, that's a little pet peeve, and that's a good pet peeve. But he comes I, from I, a family I, of yeah. Baptist pastors. Yeah, it's like, what, come what's on, going folks. on there? Right, yeah, what is going on? Right. But he's so, not a Baptist himself. Well, yeah, well, it's, you, you may claim it. I don't know. Who knows, but it's <laughs> one of those. Okay. Well, it's not good there. But at the end of the day, we've got a, um, we've got a, got a pretty interesting race. And, and, and you, you touched on something turnout. But, you know, the way people are voting is changing. Um, we now have these extended voting periods now. Not just vote, not just election day; it's election week. Mm-hmm. And well, and three we, days, three, three days. days. Well, three days here. Three okay. days. Because okay. it changes every year, whatever they're yeah. So this year's the three day. Yeah. Okay, so you have three days to vote. And uh, are they allowing for um, ballot harvesting t- uh, techniques and, and you know or to occur? You know, some states are allowing you to go out and set up a, a, a ballot station at your church or at a nursing home or whatever. And, and they call it ballot harvesting. Very controversial, but at some states it's legal, and and, yeah. and that's just this is how a lot of Democrats are winning elections. So yeah, and the Republicans good. haven't always taken advantage of that. They haven't. And so, so, so in this and, state, yeah. do you have any sense of what we're doing? What well, the rules are in this state, the, the, and how the, that's going to affect this election? With Secretary Adams, I know, I know s- some things about mm-hmm. this. One is I know we he's really cleaned up the election rolls a lot. Good, you know, which is a huge issue when it comes to ensuring the integrity of our election. Mm -hmm. I think it was reasonable to pull this back to only three days of early voting rather than uh, a much more extended period of time, which some people would want. So I think that's the right policy. Plus election day itself. Mm -hmm. I'm a traditionalist. I like to go on election day, get the sticker. That's right. I voted, you know, all that stuff. So a lot of people do. But some people, I think the younger uh, people like to have that option. And if you're working and whatever, I I do think... Let's not get, I know some people get hung up on this, but the fact is when our country began, there was extended voting because you couldn't get from uh, some places to the courthouse in Kentucky in a day. (laughs) So there was, there was, that was allowed. So that's not a, that's not really a new idea for the past 
several decades, we've had one day of voting. So when that change occurred, I think there was some misunderstanding about it. Climate change is an emergency. Democratic socialism. Codify more right to choose. Hell yes, we're going to take your AR-15. Whichever side can motivate their base to turn out, really. Now, usually talk about the base in the primary, but because Kentucky, we're one of only a couple of states that has any kind of election next year or this year in an off year, odd numbered year, uh, the vote, the turnout will be an issue because of that. If it was in a presidential election year, I think that's Republicans in our state but right. just because of the numbers. But I, I think that uh, being an off year, I think they have a real uphill climb in terms of. Uh, in terms of uh, many issues, the voter turnout, yeah. and also I think, um, you know, there there's a, a definite divide when it comes to Bashir mm -hmm. in terms of how he handled the the COVID. I think he's going to get high points for how he handled the disasters, the tornado. Mm -hmm. uh, he did a very good job with that, um, and also the flooding. But let's not forget. The governor doesn't make decisions about spending money, it's the legislature. Mm. And because of their conservative policies in building our rainy day fund, building our reserves, they could write $200 million checks That's to right. both of those areas That's right. and help immediately because of those sensible, common sense, conservative policies. They didn't spend like Andy Bashir wanted them to. So let's get the record straight here. So also, credits. I sure. think, I think it really depends on it, it, with the COVID, with how he handled that, I think it really depends on many things. One is if you're a small business owner who was shut down, a small restaurant owner, by a governor who absolutely has no clue about how a business works. He He's a lawyer. He has no clue about business. None mm -hmm. whatsoever. Mm -hmm. right. he, he thought that the restaurants could just snap their fingers and come back whenever mm -hmm. he, he, whenever right. he uh, decided they could. Right. That's not how America operates. Yeah. Now, the legislature, to its credit, did try to rein him in a little bit but on this. But I think it's really going to depend. I do think there are people who are naive about yeah, this. And right. they think, well, here's this, you know, and he, he's a he's a likable candidate. Right. Both of them are. Right. But I do think it's going to matter. If, if you're affected from. negatively by these shutdowns and what, by the way they operated, you, yeah, you have a certain perspective on Andy Bashir that's, exactly. that's not positive. So. Yeah. Uh, for example, a lot of churches out there that were shut down. If you're a member of a, of a local church that was shut down for months and months, or weeks, or however however long it was, and then if, even if you had in some churches tried to come back, and he would send the send the state police to, to take people's license. I mean, it's like a Gestapo. You know, on Andy's, Easter he, Sunday. On Easter that's Sunday. That's like, you know, <laughs> I mean, Andy's, all times. <laughs> you know, that's Andy's scary. Gestapo. In Kentucky. Yeah. In so, Kentucky. <laughs> that's right. Isn't that crazy? It's just something about the Bashirs and wanting to lock up Christians. I don't get it. It's it's uh, yeah. it's because uh, his dad did the same thing with uh, Kim Kim Davis up there. So, um, but anyway, that's a little pet peeve, and that's a good pet peeve. But he comes I'm, from I, a family I, of yeah. Baptist pastors. Yeah, it's like, what, come what's on, going folks. on there? Right, yeah, what is going on? Right. But he's not a Baptist himself. Yeah, well. It's you may claim it. I don't know, yeah. but it's one of those. Okay, well, let's not go there. But at the end of the day, we've got a um, we've got a got a pretty interesting race, and and, and you, you touched on something turnout, but you know the way people are voting is changing. Um, we now have these extended voting periods now. Not just vote, not just election day. It's election week. Mm -hmm. And, well, and three we, days. Well, three, three days. days. Well, three days here. Three okay. days. Because it changes every year, whatever the yeah. So this year it's the three day. Yeah. Okay, so you have three days to vote. And uh, are they allowing for um, ballot harvesting uh, techniques and, and 
you know, or to occur. You know, some states are allowing you to go out and set up a, a, a ballot station at your church or at a nursing home or whatever. And, and they call it ballot harvesting. It's very controversial, but in some states it's legal, and, yeah. and, and that's just, this is how a lot of Democrats are winning elections. Yeah, yeah and the Republicans go. haven't always taken advantage of that They haven't. And so, so, so in this and, state, yeah. do you have any sense of what we're doing, what well, the rules are in this state, the, the, and how that, that's going to affect this election? With Secretary Adams, I know, I know s- some things about hmm. this. One is I know we, he's really cleaned up the election rolls a lot. Good. You know, which is a huge issue when it comes to ensuring the integrity of our election. Mm -hmm. I think it was reasonable to pull this back to only three days of early voting rather than uh, a much more extended period of time, which some people would want. So I think that's the right policy. Plus election day itself. Mm -hmm. I'm a traditionalist. I like to go on election day, get the sticker. That's right. I voted, you know, all that stuff. So a lot of people do. But some people, I think the younger uh, people like to have that option. And if you're working and whatever, I I do think... I. Let's not get, I know some people get hung up on this, but the fact is when our country began, there was extended voting. Climate change is an emergency. Democratic socialism. Codify. Everyone's right to choose. Hell yes, we're going to take your AR-15. I didn't drive it down here today because uh, the Metro Police Department put out a report. It's probably been about a month ago that said, and it was a crazy number of uh, Kias that are being stolen since the start of the year because there's some kind of design flaw that makes them easy to steal, steal mm. here in Louisville. Mm. Wow. And I talked to one of my um, police friends and, and he said that's absolutely 100% the truth mm-hmm. and there's a lot of things that, yeah. for example uh, if if a, a car is actually stolen they're not permitted I'm talking about the Louisville Police Department permitted to engage and, 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 and go on a chase yeah. be, because uh, I'm saying just to cut the, the chase on that just I don't know how much time yeah but, but just this it's significant, I think, that Daniel Cameron got the FOP endorsement. Yeah, and I do huge. think crime is going to be an issue in this campaign. I think crime it and needs safety. It needs to be. In, exactly. Yeah. Well, that's, and it should be always because that's a proper function of government. Yes, sir. Is public yeah. safety. Yeah. And so is, does his messaging right now include discussions of crime? And, yeah. And, yeah. And, and absolutely. Okay. I think uh, this that, is that a, may be one of his stronger areas, too. Okay, so and that's I that's think, good. again, especially in the metro areas. Metro, right. Mm-hmm. In the urban areas. And John the state, Hodgins, the uh, my friend, he's exactly right about that. And he yeah. was very close, worked in the Bevan administration. He right. he knows. And that, that geographical, that issue of geography is important, too, in an election. But let's keep in mind, what's the most populous, largest County and city in Kentucky. We're here yeah, right yeah, now. Here, right here. here. Exactly. So you have yeah, to let, show let, up. Let me here, switch. So. I'm, I'm going to extend the show just a little bit and talk about this one topic that uh, we haven't touched on since our, our last discussion of this is Cameron's pick for lieutenant governor. Let's, uh, there's, that was pretty controversial. Well, everybody thought that he would pick just one of the uh, other candidates that he had beaten in the primary. You know, Quarles, or you know, probably not Kraft, but but some of the, some of those others. Uh, you know, the uh, uh, mayor of um, Somerset. I forgot his name. Great, great uh, uh, guy. Uh, Kick, yeah, yeah, Kick, yeah, Alan, Alan, yeah, Alan, Alan. Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. And so we had a lot of good candidates, but he, he picked someone else. And so Bob, you you know this this person, so who, who know who Robbie he? Mills well, yeah, uh, very well. He was uh, one of the leaders on Senate Bill One Hundred and Fifty, 
mm-hmm. uh, as far as getting that. And there were a number of legislators. What is Senate Bill 150? What is that? Is that? Uh, it, it covered a, a lot of things, but essentially uh, it, it broke down uh, the ability uh, or the inability of having specific uh, gender uh, okay. doctrines. Okay, so, so it was protection uh, of... Uh, it, it also you know, gave parents yeah. the right to be and involved in the, the, the bigger thing. Curriculum. There we go. Yes. There we go. So, so he's, he's a strong conservative in yes. that sense. Um, but why why did he pick him, generally? I mean, it, it's, I've heard something about maybe his well, ability to work I, I, the legislature I, or, or what? If you think about yeah. it and really break it down, um, the former governor before Bashir, and we obviously know Bashir uh, as well, had not so good relationship with, with the legislature. Mm-hmm. Uh, Robbie Mills uh, has served in both the House and the Senate, uh, as far as the Kentucky State Legislature is concerned. Very well liked, very well respected, uh, strong conservative, uh, and, and he's from Western Kentucky. You know, and 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 again, I think all those reasons combined. Uh, is what, what led him to, to yeah. make I that think that's Jim, a huge, what, what, what were the criticisms yeah. of that, that well pick? but I think that's a huge reason is getting yeah. you were just talking about geography and how mm-hmm. important and I think that's important and uh, I do think the legislative connection is matters uh, Senator Mills uh, carried our bill this year on the uh, get, uh, not allowing school districts to automatically reduce uh, take union dues and political mm-hmm. contributions out of paychecks mm-hmm. now the union members have to go and collect them or the union bosses have right. to go and collect them from individuals this is mm-hmm. a huge win wow so he was willing to step up and do some of those things and he has a good relationship with the legislature but i do think geography matters too mm-hmm. i think getting somebody uh outside of the bubble if you will outside of the triangle area of lexington and louisville and northern kentucky i think uh, mattered there and of course uh, some of the other candidates were, would have been, and not that they wouldn't have been good, I think, but so, so tactically, I do think geography. It was, you know, tactically, it was a good move, just geography, geography yeah. legislative. But does he add sizzle to the campaign? Well, you know, every I, what I found is everyone, every, every candidate nominee has a different approach on this. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Matt Bevan picked um, Janine Hampton, who was the first uh, African American to serve statewide mm-hmm. uh, in our in our history of our Commonwealth. Yeah. So we made some progress on the Republican side. There, it's been Republicans who, by the way, have uh, broken these barriers. By the way, with That's Daniel right. Cameron, That's also right. we might point out, but but I but he looked at that differently. You know, he wanted somebody I think that would uh, maybe take on certain projects and mm-hmm. and lieutenant governor hampton she visited over 200 schools during her tenure she took on education so everyone has a different i do think it, it does help to have someone who's legislatively connected especially now yeah. with a super majority in the legislature yes yeah. and even even governor Bashir with rocky atkins um, now we don't agree he's getting mm-hmm. a uh, he spiked his pension when he got this job. Let's make that point. Mm-hmm. But he's well liked in the legislature, and he's done. He's really played that role really well and been a good advisor. I think okay, we'll, so. We'll, that we'll, see, we'll see if that plays into the uh, yeah. to the campaign here, and hopefully, yeah. but we'll see. It just, it's uh, like I said, it's been a controversial pick, but I think everybody likes him, and I can see the uh, why why Cameron would do it. Okay, thirty seconds or less. What is the key issue that's going to decide this campaign, Bob? Oh boy. <laughs> I, I'm going to say at the end of the day, uh, it's going to come down to the big cities. And I said safety and security, um, crime, I think it's going to play a huge role. Okay. I'm, I'm giving you more than one. No, but, it's not, no, no, but, but, but I also think, uh, you know, getting into the social issues uh, are, are going to be very important as well. Well said. Crime, COVID, and I can't make this a C, education, I think will be up there not at the top maybe but certainly mm-hmm. part of this race well with the jcps fiasco exactly. i think maybe people and that's why. To, that's to, why yeah right yeah. i tend to agree with all you yeah. guys i think there, there's a cult- cultural moment where people crime that, covid and culture there we go yeah, right. yeah, there we go. yeah. well i mean yeah, i think we're at a moment to do where I three think c's conservatives or people that have more of traditional worldview i think we finally found our sea legs and we're starting mm-hmm. to understand that this is really important you got to push back i don't think so. the culture issue though is going to have as much impact as maybe some would hope it would uh, yeah. Uh, just because of what you mentioned earlier about how things have changed and people look at things. Yeah. But I do think the perception is going to be important. It's right. perceptions of can this person lead? Will they speak their mind or will they 
just blow whichever way the wind goes, you yeah. know. And I do think, but I think the, the Andy Bashir is a formidable candidate. Yeah. Uh, Attorney General Cameron is a formidable candidate. He won the Attorney General's office. I, it's, there, there's, this may be wishful thinking, but I disagree with you. I think there's a moment right now where the average person, beyond folks like ourselves that pay attention to this, is they're now aware of these sort of woke politics yeah, yeah. dynamics I, that are going on. I think the it will Bud be. Light, yeah. If you can get a butt light it, it, reaction to yeah. a, do, do you to want it. the sisters of perpetual indulgence, yeah, right. you know, coming to our yeah. state he, house? He could, and, he could have pulled that off yeah. four years ago, but now, yeah. no. Well, you know, right, now, let me, so, let me so clarify. There's, there's I, I just don't yeah. think that can be the only. I totally no, agree with you. No, no, no. It's not. But it needs to be It needs to be placed into a, it needs to be connecting the dots. If you don't like what's happening in your school, you need options. That's Correct. right. You need exactly choices. Right. Yeah. No matter right. what that is. Yeah. It yeah. takes a very, uh, you know, succinct and powerful message that, get, that resonates to really do that. And, and that's, that's a hard thing. I haven't, I haven't heard that. Yet. Energetic. Energetic. Yeah. You need some energy too. And so, but uh, we'll but I'm see. not making any judgment on this campaign. I, you know, no, no, no. It, it's yeah. we'll see. I think the next. I think in a couple of weeks after. Yeah. You know this. As we come Next down the stretch, days. I think yeah, we'll see, yeah. Yeah, think we'll see a lot more. Yeah. Well, it's a great episode. We'll, uh, you're watching the station live from the Kentucky State Fair. or well, semi-live. I guess we're taping at the Kentucky State Fair. And uh, appreciate you guys. Jim Waters and Bluegrass yeah. Institute and Bob Scott. And uh, tune in next week for another episode of the station, Kentucky's Conservative Outpost.